Hello, hello, hello. It's Mary with Stamps and Lingers, and it is Thursday at uh, 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, which means it is time for a Facebook video. I'm going to double check. It looks like I am actually making airwaves go out into the interwebs, so that is a good thing. All right, so here's our card for today, and it uses one of my very favorite sets. This is a standalone stamp set, doesn't have dies, doesn't have coordinating DSP, doesn't have anything except a beautiful, beautiful um, leaf and several very pretty fonts. So this is absolutely one of my favorite stamp sets ever called Soft Seedlings. And of course, I don't know why I said of course, because why is of course, that's not even a thing. Hey Marva, hi Faith. Um, I did use stylish shapes. I probably said this approximately three or four, you know, billion times. If you don't have stylus shapes, just get it, okay? Please trust me on this. It is an absolutely wonderful, wonderful die set. It's standalone by itself. It, this is all it does right here is make shapes and labels. And then I used a little bit of st stitched rectangles because I needed that die right there. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm going to show you what we did. This is the card. It has um, some embossing on it. It's just got some stamping and then some die cut shapes. Um, and then on the inside, just another leaf and a small sentiment. So very simple, kind of fun. I mean, I think it's kind of fun. What we're gonna do is let's first make the, um, the, the piece of cardstock. We're gonna decorate it. We're basically making our own designer series paper and we're going to decorate it with the big soft seedlings lint. Hi, Faith, hi, Carol, and Margaret, and Penny. I appreciate you guys all coming, and I hope you are having a great week. Hey, Barbara and Brooke, thank you for coming. All right, so let's go ahead and start. What I did is I've used, uh, for my leaves, I've used Daffodil Delight and Granny Apple Green. And I'm gonna show you how I did this, and we're just gonna stamp all over this piece of paper. now. I'm gonna tell you what, you're gonna have extra leftover, like this right here is what it looks like after I cut, okay, I screwed this one up, so I had to cut an extra one. Give yourself some room. So this is four and a quarter by like six and a half, okay? And it's too big, but it gives you some room to play with when you're trying to get um, pretty groupings of leaves when you get ready to cut them up, okay? So don't skimp on this. This isn't the time to save cardstock. All right, so I'm gonna take my, uh, let me get this open. Hang on a second. Let me clear off some stuff here. Hey, Debbie, building an arc. Yeah, well, I hope you managed to get that arc built and because if you do get the arc built, then it'll stop raining. So there you go. Everybody will be so happy with you. Hey, Debbie. Oh, and I've got a bug in my in my room. So if I do this a bunch, you're going to know it's because the bug is bugging me. All right, bugs bug me. I need my dog to come get him. Okay, so I've got the big image, and I'm just going to ink it up with Daffodil Delight, okay, all over it. And then I'm going to take my um, sponge dauber and some Granny Apple Green, and I'm just going to daub, daub, daub around the base of the leaves like that. And then daub, daub, daub the stems. Let me be sure I'm staying in the in the camera here. Okay, so I'm just daubing around and getting the stems good and green and a little bit up in the leaves, okay? And if you can see if you can see hard edges between the green and the yellow, tap tap over the top of them to uh, soften that up. And then you're just going to stamp. Now, I will tell you, I highly recommend that you clean your stamp between each image. Otherwise, you're gonna get like mud. It's not gonna be nice, you aren't gonna like it. And if you stick your hand in your Granny Apple Green, I can just about guarantee you get Granny Apple Green somewhere you didn't want it. Okay, so we're just gonna repeat that. And this part's kind of boring to watch, I'm sorry, but boy, will you have seen a bunch of how to sponge dauber a stamp. So y'all know that uh, weekly deals, this is the last week of the weekly deals. They end on the 28th, a couple of days before the actual end of the month, but the new ones are out. And um, so I hope you'll go in and get them some good savings. And we'll just go ahead and stamp right there. And every once in a while, I'm gonna stamp just this little seedling seedling, the little baby seedling in straight up Daffodil Delight. Just to add a little bit extra stuff, clean my stamp. 
You'll be thrilled to know that it will go much quicker once we get this piece made. And I'm awfully sorry if I'm shaking the heck out of the desk. Okay, hey, Lenny, thank you for coming. And we'll just get some of this granny apple green. Now this is, a, I don't know if you guys follow challenges at all, but this is the uh, color throwdown palette. It was brown and green and yellow and um, turquoise, teal, like that. So I first started out, I pulled out crushed curry and I was going to do... Um, I was going to do Mossy Meadow, but then I, I just couldn't get my hand around the blue color. And so, or my head around the blue color. So I decided to go with a more springy look. So this is, this is fall and spring coming together. Okay, green, yellow, see what I'm, see what I'm doing there? That's the, this is the transition between spring or summer and fall. That's what it is. Yeah, that's the story. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay, again, you're not going to use all of this, but it's better to have more so that you have more options for when you're cutting your, your uh, die pieces, your shapes, to go on the card front. All righty. So, did y'all see the blog hop today? I, we had some really really pretty projects going. I really like black and white with a pop of color and some of the ladies, boy, well, really all of the ladies did a superb job with the color combination this week. I was really impressed by all the cards. They're just gorgeous. So if you haven't had a chance to hop through all of them, go to my blog and get the, uh, so that you can go through all of those different projects because lots of good inspiration for you. All right, this I think will be the last sponge daubered one. And then I think we'll have room to put one more Daffodil Delight doohickey. And we'll do it, and then we'll be done. I almost, did you see how close I was to doing it? I almost went into the, my Daffodil Delight. Okay. The other thing I always do is I don't try to figure out, well, how much of my stamp do I need colored? for each one. I know I'm going to be off of it and I know it's not going to take all of the stamp, but I stamp all of it so that all I have to worry about when I go to stamping is the orientation, not whether I've actually got ink where I wanted it. Okay, so that's done. Let me set that aside and do one more. Where did you go? There it is. We're going to do one more little daffodil guy right here like this. Okay. Now, I'm going to close all my ink pads. Uh, hello, Juanita. Hey, Linda. Yes, we have a very talented team. Yes, I like that, Debbie. That's my story, and you're stuck with it. That, that's good. I, I may have to use that if you don't mind, or if your dad doesn't mind. Okay, so let's look at what we're going to make here. I told you we're going to make one of these little square fat dudes, almost a square but not really, from stitched rectangles. And then we're going to use these two from Stylish Shapes. So the um, next to smallest and then the one bigger than that. And I'm going to make two of these, which is the largest of the three, and then one of each of these others. So what you kind of want to do is lay it out so that you can get as pretty a grouping as you can and kind of just decide how you want it to look and then we're going to cut it. So I think I'm going to cut there like that and then I'll be able to come down here and cut this large one, okay? So while I do that, let me get the let me get my um let's see, should we do that like that? No, I think I want more leaf less stem. More leaf less stem. Okay, I'm going to cut these out. I'll be right back. And for those of you who always wonder what I'm saying when I step away from this to cut, I'm not saying anything, I promise. I'm probably uh, humming the Jeopardy tune. Okay? Because it's the, just, just you wait, I'll be right back. That's what that means. All right. So we're going to get this cut. I'll get my four pieces cut. And then I'll be right back.
right. Here we go. So you can see I've got a little left over. You could hang on to that and probably cut a circle out of it or what, or just toss it. I mean, it's cardstock. Okay, so let me put these back and we'll look at how to arrange them. Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> All right, let me grab a drink. Now, to assemble our card, before you guys got here, I have a piece of early espresso that I embossed in the Fern 3D embossing folder. Yes, I know these are not ferns, but I really wasn't looking for matching the types of foliage. I was just looking for foliage and texture. So that's what I did. I've got early espresso and I'm fixing to mat it on um, a piece of pool party. So pool party, early espresso, granny apple green, and uh, Daffodil Delight turned out to be my color palette, okay? And I liked how this turned out. The, the uh, pool party and early espresso for me is a pretty good, it's a good fall combination. Pretty sure I had some plaid wool pants this color when I was in high school. God help me. All right, so that's embossed. And then, really, I just kind of played with it a little bit. Um, it took me a second to get my... This is the um, uh, Saturday Sketch Challenge layout. So I was playing with it. And really what I was doing was just kind of trying to figure out what made me happy, what made my eyeball happy. You can tell these do not go back in at all in the same way they came out of the card, the piece of cardstock that I decorated. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. Probably move it over just a little bit so that it's kind of centered up. This is a lot like um, hanging pictures at your house. You know, where you try to figure out the right thing and, you know, like, what would Martha Stewart do? Martha Stewart would know exactly how to do this, but I don't. And that's my problem. I don't always know how to do it. But that makes me pretty happy right there. I've got about the same distance between these two and top to bottom, so I'm good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some dimensionals, and I'm going to put dimensionals on the back of each one. And I'm going to put five. Five is the magic number for these. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. And then I'm putting them back, okay, in their spot so that I keep track of what's, what's what and how it is and where it's going. Hey, Donna. Hi, Holly. Appreciate you coming. Like that. And I'll get them lined up a little bit better before I hook them on for, for reels but at least they're back in the orientation I had them that I had decided was pretty and the, um, the arrangement that I had. I think I'm going to change that. I want to go like that. Yeah, that makes me happier. Okay. Remember, it's just cardstock. Until you stick it down, you can do whatever you want with it. And I mean, truly, even after you stick it down, you can get it back up. That maybe didn't, that wasn't, that wasn't great. I'm going to get some more dimensionals here. But you can actually, you know, have you seen The Secret? Do you know how to pick up dimensionals? Do you know how to do it? I'll show you here in just a second. Not that we're going to do it, but I'm going to show you how you could if you had to. Okay, so there we go. So now we'll just go ahead and get these picked up. And pulled off of this, and then we're going to start... Could you cut a strip on the left of the leftover for, yes, you absolutely could. You could, um, if you were gonna do that, then yeah, you'd wanna put your strip up the side, right? Cause there's, you don't have anything that would go across the bottom, but yeah, that would surely work. Absolutely, oh no, 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 get up. Now I couldn't do that again if I tried y'all. I could not do that again if I tried twice on Sunday. All right, let's, we're going to get it. It's okay. It's okay. Everybody hold your breath. Okay. Okay. We're okay. One more. Phew. That was a close call right there. All right. So I'll go ahead and put this on like 
that. And then I'm going to put this one down because they're kind of like the they're kind of like the base of this picture arrangement here, right? Because this I want to be it's about that far for me. Big old fat finger about like that and about like that. OK, and then I can stick the other two in the in the gaps, as it were. All right. Yeah, the dimensionals are pretty amazing. All right, so let's put that th let's put that there like that. If you're going, what in the heck is she doing? See, this is why I don't hang a bunch of pictures because I'm not very good at it. I don't do it very goodly. I don't do it very goodly. Okay, so then we'll go ahead and tuck that one in right about there. And I'm trying to make these at least parallel to each other, not skewed lines. See how I use those math terms like that? Pretty amazing, I know. All right, so there is our card front. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the Pool Party Sheer Ribbon, and I'm going to put it right across here with some stamp and seal. And I have a sentiment. This is from Soft Seedlings, and it's stamped in Pool Party on very vanilla and cut with the amazing and wonderful label, this one right here, from Stylish Shapes. And it is going to go right in the middle over the top of this ribbon. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap it like this, and it's going to go just a little past the edge, like that, and then double back. And I, I have a dimensional cover that is trying to get on this card. He's like, no, no, I want to be on the card too. Put a little more seal right there, and then we're going to come back. And it's going to be kind of on top of itself and then down like that. Here's the cool thing about using the seal. If you get your ribbon on and you and then you stick this over the top and you're like, oh, God, that looks horrible. You can really kind of pick it up and move it around a little bit. OK, now I'm going to put some dimensionalities right on the card de front like that. And I'm not going to get too carried away because I don't want to get outside my sentiment. So before I take the lids off, I'm going to put it on, make sure I can't see any dimensionals outside of it, and it's fine in the middle there, and I think we're good. So let's pick this up, like so. And you can kind of give that a push, and it'll push right through and stick to the, stick to the cardstock underneath except I can't get that lid off. There we go. Okay. And then that looks about straight, doesn't it? Let me pick it up and look at it. Yep, that looks about straight. Okay, one little decoration. I'm going to make one little decoration for you because everything needs a little bling. I've got some rhinestones, and I have my Dark Pool Party Stampin' Blend. Remember, you can color rhinestones, pearls, and a few other things. I mean, it's always worth giving it a try, but you can use any of our Stampin' Blends to color um, gems and things like that, so you can get custom, custom gems. And that's not gonna be very dark on that piece of paper, but when you pick it up and put it on the card front, on that very vanilla, it is distinctly pool party. Can you see that? It's definitely pool party. So that's our card front. That's all there is to that. Now for the inside, I am going to stamp the second uh, sentimente in pool party. In the pool party. Here we go. Oh, ah. Uh. Hey, I have a question for you. It's an informal survey. I know you all use Stampin' Up! acrylic blocks, right? What is your two most favorite si sizes? Okay, remember they go A through uh, H. And what, what are the two that you have the most of? I know that I have the most D size, which is uh, this size right here, okay? Right now I'm using C, which is my second most favorite. And the other one that I really, really like a lot 
is H. So C, D, and H are my most used blocks. What are yours? I know everybody's like, we use blocks? They have names on them? What? Okay. So I'm going to stamp this in pool party. Remember always, or, you know, you don't have to, but I like to double check that I have a straight image on here. D and C, yes. Yes. D. Did you know that a lot of our card kits have an actual D block in them? They're different. They're more like the paper pumpkin blocks, but you still, with the all-inclusive kits, you do get an acrylic block, which is nice. All right, so I'm going to put this on as straight as I can make it, and I'm going to hold it very still and keep it on the cardstock without rocking it, okay? It's really easy to get a halo when you have... Uh, real close edges to the engraving. Okay, so it's very easy to get a halo and you really don't want that. All right, now I'll put this aside and I'm going to get my stamp back out and clean it off because I did not do that before I stuck it aside. And some ink. Let's get some ink. Let's do ink, shall we? A little bit of Daffodil Delight and our Granny Apple Green. And we'll ink this up. And then do dauber dauber daubering. Dauber dauber daubering. That sounds like what a turkey would say. What do turkeys say? Dauber dauber dauber. No, they don't. They say gobble gobble gobble. Actually, they go. Blah, 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 blah. I don't even know what that, that's, they say it's a gobble, but I promise they're not saying the G or the B word letters. They're just going blah, 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 like that. Okay, and then we're just going to stamp this in the corner. And again, you want to color your entire image so that you have all the creative flexibility that you need to stamp your uh, leaf. Now, let me go ahead right quick and find my envelope so that I can do that and then I can put my ink away for good. Sometimes I wish they would put grid lines, yes, and sometimes I'm happy they don't. So it just depends on whether it's Tuesday, Thursday, Christmas, a holiday, Halloween. One never knows what I'm really going to wish. Okay, one more time inking in Daffodil Delight and then dauber dauber daubering with the Granny Apple Green. And this is a card that you could very easily do, um, change up your colors for your ink for your leaf. You could go straight up fall and do, um, you could do Granny uh, Crush Curry and maybe Pool Party or Mango Melody. Not Pool Party. Do not use Pool Party on your leaves. That would be wrong. <laughs> maybe Crushed Curry and some, um, I just lost my brain, Mango Melody or Pumpkin Pie. Okay, and here we go. We'll put this on the front of our envelope. And the thing that's so fun about this is that every time you ink it, you get a different leaf, which is exactly how it is in real life, right? Exactly how it is in real life. G, E, oh, G is a good one. I forget about G a lot. I have all of them, but I forget about G. And I don't know why I forget about G. Okay, so on the envelope flap, I thought about pulling out a, one of the um, the DSPs for the color packs, and then I thought, nope, I'm just going to stamp my little seedling in Daffodil Delight right there. So this is a completely non-DSP required card. There we go. All right, so the envelope is done. Now all we got to do is a little bit of gluing and dimensionalizing, and we will be done scared. We'll be done, Ske. Put a little liquid glue on here. Hey, Donna, appreciate you coming. And... And I decided to go with an early espresso card base. That one seemed the happiest to me. You could also probably be pretty happy with a thick, very vanilla, but... I just liked, I liked, um, well, I'll show you what I liked in just a second, why I thought, why I decided on this one. What I ended up liking 
was the fact that that really made it just look like there was a pool party frame on this, right? So that, that's why I picked the early espresso. Thank you, Penny. Appreciate that. And then we're going to do some dimensionalating. Dimensionalating or dimensionalizing depend on, you know, tomato, tomato, potato, to potato. Neither of them are words. Oop, I just bonked the camera. Sorry. All right. Hello, Rosie. Thank you for coming. I hope your appointment was successful. All right, so one last thing here, which is pulling off these dimensional cut. And I don't know why I went off of the side like that. I know, well, actually I do, I know, because I don't want the dimensional covers on my card front. And let's make sure this is right side up. Always so disappointing. And there we go. Very calm, very cool, very collected. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stick another dimensional under there. I think it feels like it wants a dimensional right there. So I'm going to just take the cover off of both sides and use my third hand here to slide that under like that. And there we go. Oh, look at that. I even put the leaf on at the right spot on the envelope. There you go. All right. So making your own DSP is fun and it's easy. And the Soft Seedlings is a perfect stamp set for it. All right. Okay, well, guys, I appreciate you spending part of your day with me. I hope you have a great rest of your week and that I will see you on Saturday for my YouTube video at 7 Eastern. All right. Thanks, guys. Ta.